welcome all Board of Executives of Blue Cross Blue Shield. Today we will be discussing the debate as to whether companies should charge their employees more for their health insurance because, because they are obese or addicted to cigarettes. Insurance costs are rising and companies are struggling to deal with extreme budget costs in this struggling economy. Companies are considering charging individuals who smoke or are overweight more for their health insurance. According to CNN, 32% of American adults are obese and 12% of these American adults are addicted to tobacco. Um, there are many viewpoints to this debate, and in order to see both sides of it, we have four very intellectual panelists with us today to help us learn about both sides. My name is Rachel Davari, and I am the Executive Chairman at Memorial Hermann Hospital. And to the right of me, I have Kelsey Koval, who is the doctor at St. David's Hospital here in Austin. Next to Kelsey, we have Brendan Uppercamp, he is the CEO of Scott and White Hospitals. Next, we have Maria Stewaz, and she is a lawyer here in Austin. And finally, we have Shay Sutherland, who is an ethics professor at Harvard University. Some ground rules for this panel. I will be asking each panelist two questions, and they will be given a minute and 30 seconds to respond. This will be followed by a five-minute Q&A, so please save all of your questions to the end. Questions may vary depending upon their stance. First question, Kelsey, what is your stance on whether or not companies should charge employees who smoke or overweight more for their health insurance? <clears throat> my name is, as Rachel stated, my name is Kelsey Koval, and I'm for insurance companies charging extra for individuals who smoke and individuals who are obese. Not only are the high costs an incentive for obese individuals to lose weight and become healthier, and also for smokers to kick the bad habit, but also a must with increasing costs annually. According to Forbes online database, obese men rack up an additional $1,152 a year in medical expenses and obese women an additional $3,613 a year in medical expenses. These, excuse me, these expenses include hospitalization, um, to annual doctor's appointments, as well as random ones throughout the year, and also prescription drugs, um, all of which fall under health care coverage and is up to the individual, is, and is the individual's responsibility to pay for the treatment they receive. Um, also, many feel that this may be a violation to one's personal freedom, but everything you do in your personal life affects your health, and overall your health will affect your insurance costs. In conclusion, that is why I am for healthcare companies charging extra for those who are obese and those who smoke. Brendan, what is your stance on whether or not companies should charge employees who smoke or overweight more for their health insurance? As Rachel said, my name is Brendan Hoferkamp, and I firmly believe that um, obese people and people that smoke should be charged more for uh, healthcare. And in an attempt to improve uh, employee health, companies uh, have begun um, increasing premium uh, health care charges for their employees that are obese and smoke. And um, I definitely think it's the right option for these companies and it's unfortunate that a lot of these uh, employees, their only incentive is money now to get healthy. And now I'm going to go over two examples of companies that have implemented this strategy um, to, on their employees. Uh, one being Viridian Credit Union, which is in Iowa. They are um, forcing their employees to quit smoking and to curb obesity. And if the employees do not comply, they will uh, receive an uh, increase in their health care premium in the year 2013. And also, the Alabama State employees are facing a $25 fee if they have a um, BMI of 35 or higher. And once again, I firmly believe that these companies have the right to charge these uh, overweight and smoking people that smoke. Thank you, Brenda. Maria, what is your stance on whether or not companies should charge employees who smoke or are overweight more for their health insurance? Well, as Rachel said, my name is Maria Stewas, and I am against companies charging their employees more for health insurance if they are overweight or smoking. And there's a couple legal and ethical issues that this topic brings up. Companies are infringing more and more into the private lives of their employees, and states are beginning to realize this, and they're <coughs> enacting lifestyle statutes. 
And these lifestyle discrimination laws um, cover a wide variety of things. They range from specific issues to like an overall lifestyle. <laughs> if companies are allowed to judge their employees on weight or smoking, both of which are perfectly legal activities, um, this opens up doors for discrimination. And according to businessmanagementdaily.com, the ADA prohibits discrimination against those with any physical or mental impairments that limit major life activities. And employers need to be aware of this issue because when they have policies like this, people that feel discriminated against are going to act. And an example of this is if an employer hires a male smoker and then they don't hire a female smoker, the people can't really argue that it was just because of you know, smoking or gender. The same can apply with issues of weight, and that's why I'm against companies charging extra. Thank you, Kelsey. Shay, what is your stance on whether or not companies should charge employees who smoke or are overweight more for their health insurance? As Rachel said, my name is Shay Sutherland, and I do not believe that companies should charge people who are overweight or smoke more um, based upon uh, their lifestyle choices. Uh, wellness programs and financial penalties have proved to not be successful according to the Huffington Post. And um, the weight loss programs and the smoking cessation classes have not been working, and this, and this is why the penalties have been implemented. Um, simply telling someone that how to lose weight is not necessarily going to ensure that they are going to lose weight successfully. And the smokers are given the tools to stop smoking, however, they are very minimal. And this means that there's more chance for them to fail. Um, people often believe that, or people, sorry, smoking and overeating are addictions, and you can't solve and fix someone's addiction by punishing them and giving them fines. It'll just make it worse. Um, also, people often believe that people are only overweight because they overeat or they don't exercise enough, and this is not always true. Oftentimes, it's because of medical problems, such as glandular issues and other things, and they can't help it. Um, James Zeros of the Obesity um, Action Coalition says that obesity is a disease and should be treated as such and not punished. Um, all in all, I believe that companies are hurting their employees more than helping them with these incentives and penalties. Thank you, Shay. Next question, Kelsey. Why do you think obesity and cigarette addiction are such big problems to healthcare providers from a medical perspective? Well, from a medical perspective, the side effects from smoking include cancer, breathing problems, heart attack, and stroke. <coughs> the side effects of obesity include type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, sleep apnea, osteoarthritis, and gallstones. These, these effects due to smoking and obesity oftentimes result in more visits annually to the doctor's office and more visits to the doctor's office obviously result in higher payments of insurance. Also, risk and cost. The risk and cost that insurance companies take when insuring individuals who have a higher risk of the previous um, effects that I stated, it, it's a higher risk and cost, whereas if they were to insure someone who did not have a possibility of any of these side effects, it's a lower risk and cost to insure that individual. Um, many companies, have wellness programs in which they provide on-site gyms and tracks and counselors to help those who are obese lose the weight and also those who are smoking help kick the addiction. An example of a company that did this and resulted is Johnson & Johnson. Um, Johnson & Johnson, according to the Forbes online database, saved over $250 million in health care costs through the 2000s. These employees were given the option of either kicking the addiction or or losing weight or paying sorry we need to get to Brendan um, Brendan why do you think obesity and cigarette addiction are such big problems to healthcare providers from a company perspective as Rachel said I'm Brendan and I think um, companies should be very concerned about smoking and obesity in their companies because of the indirect and direct losses that um, uh, because of the indirect in it and uh, losses that affect the employer health care costs and the company's general costs. Uh, I'm going to be previewing some of the direct losses on a national scale. 
and obese cons the obese consume 1,429 uh, more dollars on average um, on medical bills than an average healthy employee would. And the total healthcare spending uh, on obesity has risen to 9.1% in recent years. And um, also, obese employees and employees that smoke miss 450 million more days of work on average than an employee healthy than a healthy employee would. And this cost companies nearly 153 billion dollars in lost productivity, according to SmartBusinessOnline.com. Uh, and from a company.